So, the subject of this week's lesson is unreality. That sounds like kind of an empty subject, doesn't it? But actually, it's quite enriching. You'll see why in a minute. We're going to read only sections four, section five, and section six, and, um, and, and see what it says about unreality. Okay, because it says why. In section four, in the Bible, the book of Matthew says, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Wouldn't that be such a wonderful life? A hard life, walking in the dust and the dirt and the rocks, all those distances from settlement to settlement in the hot sun. But his disciples kept him laughing and happy and they had, I think they had a wonderful experience traveling together. And um, so anyway, um, there they were um, in, in the synagogues. And in John it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha, um, his two sisters. Her sister, Martha. <laughs> okay, therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus. When he had heard thereof that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. I'm sure he was praying to be clear about personal sense, personal love, personal friendship, and turning everything to God. Then, after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may um, awake him out of sleep. Now, they had just been in, um, in Judea, and they people laughed him to scorn. They just kicked him out of town. And so the, the guys were saying, why are we going back there again? <laughs> but um, he said, no, we're going. Okay, so then in Science and Health, with key to the scriptures, Mary Baker Eddy. Oh, I wish you knew about Mary Baker Eddy more. There's so much to learn there, too. She said, divine truth must be known by its effects on the body as well as on the mind before the science of being can be demonstrated. Hence, its embodiment in the incarnate Jesus, that life link forming the connection through which the real reaches the unreal. Soul rebukes sense and truth destroys error. The only way to this living truth which heals the sick is found in the science of divine mind as taught and demonstrated by Christ Jesus. Jesus demonstrated Christ. He proved that Christ is the divine idea of God, the Holy Ghost or Comforter, revealing the divine principle, love, and healing into, and leading, sorry, into all truth. 
the Christianly scientific realm is the sensuous unreal. Sin, disease, whatever seems real to material sense is unreal in divine science. The physical senses in science have ever been antagonistic <laughs> and they will so continue till the testimony of the physical senses yields entirely to Christian science. Jesus taught and demonstrated for us to learn and do. Sin, sickness, and death must be deemed as devoid of reality as they are of good, God. In the Christian science healer, sickness, oh, to the Christian science healer, sickness is a dream from which the patient needs to be awakened. Disease should not appear real to the physician since it is demonstrable that the way to cure the patient is to make disease unreal to him. To do this, the physician must understand the unreality of disease in science. That's with a capital S. That means it's a funny word to some people to connect with Christianity, but it's exactly what it is. Science needs to be demonstrated. It needs to always evolve into higher and better ideas to benefit all mankind. So this great science of the Christ was always at work and it needed to be demonstrated just like, you know, it needed to be proven the way you have science problems in school. You have to prove it. Okay, section five. In the Bible, in the book of John, it says, then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, they're trying to get out of going back to Judea. <laughs> Any excuse? They say, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Albeit, oh, how, how be it, Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent um, ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then when Jesus came, he found, this is, yeah, he had lain in the grave four days already. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou ask, wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. So, I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And when he was at, when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Ephesians, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 
and science and health with key to the scriptures. Mary Baker Reddy says, Jesus said of Lazarus, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Jesus restored Lazarus by the understanding that Lazarus had never died, not by any admission that his body had died and then lived again. Had Jesus believed that Lazarus had lived or died in his body, the master would have stood on the same plane of belief as those who buried the body and he could not have resuscitated it. If evil is real, truth must make it so. But error, not truth, is the author of the unreal. And the unreal vanishes whilst all that is real is eternal. When it is learnt that disease cannot destroy life, and that mortals are not saved from sin or sickness by death. You know, people say, oh, he's gone to, you know, be with God. No, I'll read this again. When it is learnt that disease cannot destroy life and that mortals are not saved from sin or sickness by death, this understanding will quicken into newness of life. It will master either a desire to die or a dread of the grave and thus destroy the great fear that besets mortal existence. The relinquishment of all flesh in death and also of the fear of its sting would raise the standard of health and morals far beyond its present elevation and would enable us to hold the banner of Christianity aloft and with unflinching faith in God, in life eternal. Isn't this just so liberating? Man's individual being can no more die nor disappear into unconsciousness than can soul, for both are immortal. If man believes in death now, he must disbelieve in it when learning that there is no reality in death, since the truth of being is deathless. Death is but another phase of the dream that existence can be material. Nothing can interfere with the harmony of being nor end the existence of man in science. God, life, truth, and love make man undying. Immortal man, mind governing all must be acknowledged as supreme in the physical realm, so-called, as well as in the spiritual. The dream of death must be mastered by mind here or hereafter. Thought will awaken from its own material declaration, I am dead, to catch this trumpet word of truth. There is no death, no inaction, diseased action, over action, nor reaction. Life is real and death is the illusion. A demonstration of the facts of soul in Jesus' way resolves the dark visions of material sense into harmony and immortality. Though the way is dark in mortal sense, divine life and love illumine it destroy the unreal of mortal thought, the fear of death, and the supposed reality of error. So we'll just read this little short section now. Section six. Okay. 
Micah. I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. When I fail, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. First Thessalonians. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Rejoice evermore. And then in Science and Health, it says, Let there be light is the perpetual demand of truth and love, changing chaos into order and discord into the music of the spheres. Truth destroys falsity, falsity and error. For light and darkness cannot dwell together. Light extinguishes the darkness. And the scripture declares that there is no night there. The realization that all in harmony is unreal brings objects and thoughts into human view in their true light and presents them as beautiful and immortal. <laughs> I'm so glad we got to do this together. Thank you for joining me. It meant a lot.